my name is Anthea Kong, and um, I'm here because Amishi Chamber Ensemble uh, played my piece today. My piece is named Stars. Um, I started it as part of a project for my grade 12 composition course. Inspiration for this piece was mainly a piece by pianist Alexina Louis. It's called uh, I Leap Through the Sky with Stars. At the time when I was starting to write this piece, I was playing her piece, and it was a great influence in my life during that time. My name is David Hetherington. I'm a cellist with the Toronto Symphony. I've been assistant principal there for, for many years. Uh, I also do a lot of uh, other chamber music with other groups, and I teach at the Royal Conservatory in the Glen Gould School, and uh, really like to play chamber music. So this is why when Joaquin and I decided to, uh, to play some concerts together, we, we thought we'd form an actual group. And we came up with the name Amici, uh, which we started with uh, Patricia Parr. And it's been well over 25 years we've been playing concerts. I heard um, a group of students from Claude Watson School of the Arts uh, several years ago, uh, together with their teacher, Alan Torok doing a program with sound streams when they, they perform works uh, by their own colleagues, their own friends at school. So I started talking with Alan at this concert and he said, well, why don't you and Amici come and, uh, and do workshops at the school? Um, we've been doing it for, I think, seven or eight years. So I got to know about it because my son was a student there, my oldest son. And I, and I, and I knew that they were doing that, that sort of thing with, with another group. And so I became kind of interested because we were looking to do some kind of an educational program for Amici. Basically what it is is, is uh, very simple. We, the, there's a composition class, or so there's a class where the students write pieces, and these pieces are, are then brought to the class once they're finished, and, and an ensemble reads the pieces in front of the class so that they know what they sound like. So that's where we come in. We are the ensemble that reads to them. I always found it to be a great idea. Uh, you just uh, come into the class, the kids are sitting there, and you don't know uh, what to expect. And in fact, they don't even know uh, what to expect themselves because until then, they've just written another paper, maybe played on the piano, uh, but not heard it as, a, as an ensemble uh, playing it. And here they write something and uh, they, they hear it. Played. We, we sight read it at the time and, uh, and they get to hear what it sounds like. It sounds very different with live musicians than it does on the, the computer mock-up that they all use when they are doing the composing. A lot of it was freer, the way they played it was a lot freer than I had imagined it to be, which is, I think is a better aspect and it, it made me see this piece that I never really heard in real life before um, in a different light. It was kind of more eye-opening the conversation that goes on after the uh, piece is played uh, for the first time is interesting because we ask the student, uh, so what did you think, what should we change? And at the same time we give uh, suggestions. It's beneficial because they, they, they have their pieces played at a very high level and so it's good for them to know what's possible and what isn't possible and I think when, when you have a professional group doing this, uh, many of the things are going to be possible more than if their colleagues, for example, were playing, right? And something is impossible, that's when we come in and we say, well, maybe you shouldn't write it like this, or... And every time you listen to a piece, whether it's your own or someone else's, it's different than the last time you hear it. Um, I also learned that even though you think you've done your best, there's always room for improvement. <laughs> 